Okay, so thank you, thank you very much for the invitation. It, it was super nice that uh, I saw some very good old friends marching, David, of course, but marching up to up to now. I'm still I'm not able to pronounce his uh, surname. So, but but he 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 knows me very well. So I'm I'm sorry for. Uh, talk about our institute and our research today. I know that the day for that is tomorrow, but here in Chile it's summer and we are, how to say, super tied with conference and so on. Okay, so our group was created in 2018 when I just come back as a, from, from my postdoc in Russia. Uh, in the very beginning, the, the group was a trivial group, only me what was, uh, okay, here. But then the university start to create a, a proper group. So now we are something like six uh, professors. Uh, we have four postdoc. We have uh, two or three electronic engineers, mechanical engineers, technicians. And uh, in 2019, we joined CERN with the main purpose to join, to join Atlas Experiment. So we were developing some hardware for Atlas Experiment. Okay, with the time we join SNT experiment also and NA64. In all of them, we contribute with some data analysis and um, and hardware for sure. So uh, up to now in 2023, I can say that we are a proper group working in now in astroparticle and also in experimental particle physics. So we are located in Santiago. Santiago is a city with around seven million population. So our building is, uh, you know, in the bottom right side, uh, bottom left side, you have a very nice picture of Santiago in the winter, a lot of snow. So we are placed uh, over there. And uh, our campus is also located in a, in a place which is called Casona. People who speak Spanish know what's mean Casona, but uh, basically means a big old house. So the house is something like 400 years old. And it's a heritage of the history of Chile. Okay, so the 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 main oops, okay, main project that I, I think would be interesting for you is the after the paper of cosmo seismic effects, I would say earthquakes and cosmic rays become more interesting or more popular in Chile. So we got some found to develop a mobile cosmic ray detector station. So uh, the, the, this uh, station will have an otoscope. It's going to be, we still are thinking, but could be 80 by 80 centimeters or one meter by one meters. So also the station is going to be powered by solar cells and it's going to count with uh, neutron detectors. So in the, in, in the picture, this picture like blue colors, you can see the neutron detector. So one of our colleagues is doing some tests in the Atacama Desert. So he's measuring uh, neutrons there. And uh, what is the main purpose? Uh, okay, today we have a plan to build the first prototype, but we plan to build three of these stations. And the idea is to place the stations in the in a fault, which, a geological fault in Chile, which is very well known. The name is, in Spanish, is Falla de San Ramon. And you can see that cross from Santiago, from the north to the south. So it's, uh, the population in the region close to the, to the fault is around 7 million. So any earthquakes there could be really a big disaster. So we think that maybe we can monitor the flags of co cosmic ray near the fault, but not only cosmic ray, rays, we also have a, pro a program to measure radon along Chile. Uh, this program also is focused in use radon as an earthquake uh, precursor, but also like a public health issue because radon is the second uh, leading cause of lung cancer in the world, right? So in Chile, we have no regulations about this. So it, it is super important. But, but uh, you can see I put a map of Chile. So from the very north of Chile to the southern part, the distance is 5,000 kilometers. So it's a super complicated task to do a radon map. Last year, I spent one month in Czech Republic. I was training. We, we were to do some measurements of radon. 
Yeah, but the surface is very small. So we already cover something like 600. The first 600 kilometers, we start from the very north, moving to the south, uh, and we take something like two years in 600 kilometers. Uh, when we start the, the program of Radon, the detector, the, we have something like 100 detectors, mobile, very, how to say, very light, e easy to, to install. And we put some power bank because the detector must be connected all the time to the power. So we set the position with the GPS, we define the time in order to have the data each 10 minutes. But something that uh, we do not expect is the, is the, I would say, people effect. So all of them promise us that they are not going to unplug the detectors for more than one hour, let's say, so the power bank can support that time without any problem. But of course, they unplug for, I don't know, days. So the, the, the main problem of that is we lost the, how to say, the, the, the proper time uh, reference. So now we have a lot of data of Radon, but we have no data of time. So we are developing our own Radon detector, detectors. We are going to be powered by solar cells. So we are going to avoid the problem to, to, to lose the, the, the time reference, let's say, and use as a precursor. So in this stage, uh, we are not able to to correlate earthquakes and radon emanations, I would say. But, but we are going to do very soon, because during this year, uh, we expect to have the first prototype to do that. I don't know if you have any question up to this point. Maybe I missed it, but could you tell a little bit more about this fact that radon can be earthquake precursor of, of, of the of the Yeah. Oh, and sure. uh, I mean, in, in, in the scale time, this is... Uh, the most important scale time yeah okay there are some articles which uh, claim that let's say five days four days before an earthquake they detect an increase in the radon level uh, particularly in the l'aquila earthquake in italy which was uh, something like five magnitude of, of the earthquakes so in chile we have not a we have a very well developed net of sismometer, but no radon. So our plan is to, to develop a, a net of radon detectors. I think you, you know very well that in Chile, we have really a lot of earthquakes. So five uh, but, magnitude in Chile is almost nothing. Yeah, so is it, is it, Please tell me, tell me. Is it, is it uh, possible only for regions where radon um, contamination is relatively high or this is more general rule and can be, for example, apply in Mexico, in Japan? No answer for that because uh, we have, I have no data to, to answer that question. So, so we have, up to now in Chile, we do not detect uh, places with very, very high concentration like in Europe. For, for example, I was doing measurement in Czech Republic and there, I don't know, 1,000, 2,000 becquerels is not uh, super strange. In Chile, we found only one place with 4,000. I, I mean, I'm not talking about ground uh, radon concentration. I'm talking about in a house. So in this region, I would say, if you look the mouse, up to now, we have no, no big issues. So... I guess radon up to now is not going to be a problem for the health. Okay. But okay. Anyway, it's going to be interesting for you use radon as a precursor, right? To see what happens. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's another comment or question here. Hi, this is Gary Bon for the Budapest Hungary. So, can you say a few words about uh, the measurement details? So, so where is where do you place the detector, and how often measure? How long time uh, sampling you have, and and so on. How many times okay. measure the thing? We, we carry out the measurement for one year. Uh, the sample is taken each 10 minutes. And we place the detector in schools uh, and universities, mainly to, to produce a, a kind of impact you know, in the society in order to get found. That, that was an advice that they gave me, my Czech colleagues. So in order to get found, it's very good 
uh, have a social impact. So we start in kindergarten, schools, and universities. What do you mean? You put it on the surface, or you put in uh, inside the building, or or surface? I mean inside the building, yeah. Inside because the building. there is another option to measure in water or one meter, you know, underground. Now these are in the in, inside of a room. Of course, all measurements are inside of rooms. Not not free space, I would say. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so something interesting that we found in Chile, the difference at least to Europe, at least Czech Republic, is the the ground there is super soft. So you can drill in many places one meter without any problems. Even you can take a hammer, just bang, 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 and, and, and you can put the, the, the proof uh, one meter. Chile, uh, 40 centimeters, and it's rock. So uh, as you can see, Cordillera de los Andes, we, we are living over Cordillera de los Andes. So it's super hard to drill one meter. And now we are developing also a drilling machine in, or in order to drill, put the detector, and then cover to do the ground measurements. We, we, you know, when we start this campaign, we found uh, many issues that we are trying to solve uh, in the time. OK, so and, and just to finish, I would like to say that in Chile, we have opportunities. We are, we are going to be super happy to share with you guys the data when we have uh, proper data of radon and cosmic rays. So you are invited to, to work with, with us uh, and to apply to some fundings. In Chile, there is the National Research and Develop, uh, Developing Agency, uh, which can provide funds. We already have a very good, how to say, result. They, they also can provide funding for postdoc. The postdoc earns something like a bit more than 2,000 USD dollars per month. So in Chile, a postdoc, you live very well with 2,000 bucks. So also there are bigger projects, international cooperation. So if you are interested in something, you want to visit us, you are super welcome. And thank you.